Greetings to all, I am Nacho Imaz. I work at MediaPro in Spain. I am the CTO in charge of our OTT platforms. And today we are going to talk about the waiting room that we have implemented a couple of weeks ago during the most important game of the season, that it was the Paris Saint-Germain Olympique de Marseille. OTT platforms are quite complex. I like to say that this is a kind of puzzle where you need to put all the pieces together to make this work. It's not only you, you have a lot of providers that you need to deal with them. And problems won't come on a Monday morning when you are at the office and all the team is here. Problems will come on a Saturday night during the most important game of the week because it's when the, the assistants are under stress. Even when you do all your homework and you do your stress test. This will happen when everything is stressed, all your providers are stressed, um, probably you will need to have also plan A, plan B, plan Z, to, so you know how to react for these problems. Many times when I am talking with my colleagues, they ask me which are the most critical points for running a platform like this. For me, there are two critical points. One is the streaming, and the other, in this case, is the process of subscribing also when I say subscribing I say upgrading downgrading cancellations you know because there are a lot of things that you know you need to do with the CRM obviously we have more important things like the security data integrity and so on but as this panel is more focused on the waiting room I will say that streaming and in this case also the process and the workflow for buying subscriptions are the most important and critical for us. The importance of the streaming is quite obvious because we all know and we all want to have quality, no buffering, stability, when we are watching content at home or at work. So it's easy to understand. But the moment when the user is subscribing is also a critical point for us. And not only when buying a subscription, but also when upgrading, downgrading and cancelling. Think that, for example, you need to know all the possibilities when upgrading? Or do I have a penalty because there is a commitment when downgrading or canceling? So these are heavy questions that you need to do to your CRM. And not easy to implement because it's a heavy question for, from your system to the CRM. So we need to make some differences between the requests that we do, for example, for a login perspective, than these kind of workflows that are quite heavy in terms of subscriptions. In Media Pro, as you know, we have a lot of sports events during the season or during the year. We said that uh, we are headquarters in Spain. Um, we, er, we have every season the Clásico of football between Real Madrid and Football Club Barcelona. This is one example of the biggest football game during the season for us. But we also had boxing days that are crazy in terms of viewerships. Um, we have movies, uh, new movies that we needed to, to build on the platforms. So we are used to these kind of situations. In the past, we needed to be very creative because at the beginning there were no cloud systems. The elasticity, it's something relatively new. So we need to be creative looking for workarounds. Now we have the clouds, it's more easy to implement, because, but even using clouds, you have some limits. And that's why we need to look for other alternatives, like this one, that is the waiting room. The subscription process is a very complex workflow because you have a lot of providers to deal with them. You need to talk with payment provider, the payment gateway. You need to have a look at the geo-blocking rules. Sometimes you have a bundle and cross, cross uh, sharing with other companies. So you need to include and uh, integrate a lot of third parties. So it's not only about you. In the past, we need to be very creative to make this work. We used some workarounds, like for example, change the DNS pointing to a static server. We have created lighter process of subscribing, but this means that you will give less possibilities in terms of subscriptions to the user, and this is not good for your business. Or, for example, we did discounts during the week if you subscribe some days before the event, but this is not good for the business, so you need to look for 
the way to improve this process to retain or, or have more, more money from your subscribers. We have said that media Pro is headquarters in Spain. Um, as you know, we had a very big lockdown here during the months from March to June. It was a heavy lockdown and people was in trouble to, to go to the supermarket. And the only other possibility was to buy the supermarket online. When you access the supermarket, they, they were in trouble because there were so many people buying that all the systems were compromised. So what they needed to do was create a queue. So when you accessed, you had a message saying something like, you need to wait for 10 minutes. Um, at the beginning, the people was a bit shocked because we are used to, to buy in one click and we want just to access, see what we want, click on it, and we will have at our door in a couple of hours or days. But at, mo at that moment, we saw like, well, doesn't matter, it's 10 minutes. So instead of going physically to a supermarket, I can buy, buy online and it will take me only to wait 10 minutes. So th they thought it was rational, but we were not used to. Implementing a waiting room is something easy from a technical point of view. But this doesn't mean that it's easy, just the source code that you will need to use. It will take you a lot of time to define the parameters that we need to use, the radius. How many people will come? You don't know if they will come only 1,000, 10,000, half a million. So we need to do a lot of Excel works, calculations, depending on these parameters. So when the moment arrives, you will only need to choose between the scenarios that you have been working on. So you have all the parameters, all the ratios, and it's only a matter of picking up all the numbers and configuring your waiting room. You can't wait to do that to the moment of the event because it's impossible to decide in just a couple of seconds or minutes and decide which scenario you are and work on the numbers. You will need to do a lot of work before. In our Telefood OTT platform, we had the game between the PSE and Olympique de Marseille in a couple of weeks after we started with, with that. We didn't have much time to work on that because we were still doing tasks. But we needed to look for a, for a solution. As I said, we used in the past some creative solutions. But we discovered that Fastly was using the waiting rooms and we were using also their services from Fastly's portfolio. So we said, why not? Let's try this. So we started to investigate. The first thing that we needed to do was share this plan with our business team, that they were a bit soft at the beginning. Um, we presented the idea, the mockups, uh, the workflow, so they could understand. And I remember that exactly that week, Sony was saying that they were going to start selling the PlayStation 5 using also a kind of virtual queue or waiting room. So that was our opportunity to show that we were not crazy. Supermarkets are doing that, Sony also, so why don't we try? So we decided to move with this idea and start doing the test and implement everything. During these important games, we have different plans, plan A, plan B, plan C, to the infinite and beyond because will depend on your level of paranoia that you have and how many resources you have. For us, this was the plan B. It was the first time that we implemented, so we were not sure about that. We had the plan A that was, let's go as it is, let's try. And this was the plan B that we are going to activate changing the DNS. We have a very low TTL on the DNS, so it was very easy to do. You could implement from the beginning changing on only the radios and letting pass everybody. But uh, as we were not sure, because it was the first time that we used, we preferred to do dynamically changing the DNS. Initially, everything was fine. It was very easy. It's a typical day during a big event. Some people come from the morning buying subscriptions. Some people came uh, some hours before. But we have only a 10 minutes time frame where everything will be under stress. At the beginning, it was everything under control. We have the network operations center and our developers were working on this. 
everything was under control. If I'm not wrong, the servers were at 1.5% of CPU. Everything was running smooth. But as I said, there are so many providers in this workflow that you need to have a look at them also. We started to see that uh, some one of our providers was in trouble. At the beginning, it was only a couple of seconds that they were taking to respond to our calls. So we started to have a look more deep on this because it was risky. Some minutes later, we saw that this was not good. We were having some responses of 12 seconds. So it was clear that this third party provider was in trouble. So at that moment, we thought that it was the best moment to start using the waiting room. And it was two minutes before the kickoff of the game. So it was not an easy decision because it was the very first time that we implemented that. Of course, we tried that during the, during the week, some days before. But during the week, there are no big games. So we tested the waiting room, but it was not a real test. So we needed to change the DNS, and we started with that. At that moment, as I said, we had already done the work because we did a lot of Excel calculations. So during the minutes before, we were looking at which was our scenario. It was our first scenario, second, third, depending on how many people was coming, how the servers were, how many server instances were running. So it was an easy decision to, to look at that and grab the parameters and configure our waiting room. You can't wait to decide this until the last minute. It's impossible. You need to do this, to do this before. And that's all. Thanks for watching. Hopefully any of you will use this implementation in your solutions. I'm happy if this helps to any of you. Thank you.